The Progressive School of Rock stage now brings you the princess of pinstriping. She's the sorceress of the swirl. She's the loveliest letterer in the land. She is Jillian Hellcat Rossi. Hey everyone, I'm Hellcat. I'm a pinstripe artist. I'm gonna be demonstrating a freehand design on this white pearl gas tank. So come on over and check it out. I'd love to teach you a little bit about pinstriping. This way you get to see it live and see close up how I lay my lines. The first thing I, I do is I whip out all this one-shot paint on these magazines. It's important to palette your brushes. I use a special brush called squirrel-haired pinstriping brushes. They're made just for pinstriping. It's a real precision-based art form. I do a lot on motorcycles and hot rods, and I travel all over the country and do shows. First thing you want to do is usually lay a center line so that you don't have to fumble with it not being symmetric since pinstriping is all about symmetry. Usually mark it out here with a nice uh, soft measurement tape. I use mineral spirits to reduce the one-shot paint. The one thing that most people don't know about pinstriping is how to get a clean line. It's all based off of the paint consistency. You really want to keep playing with this paint, get a nice consistency to be able to, to get a nice clean line. It can't be too wet and it can't be too dry. So you're constantly working with the paint. And this paint is also meant to be on top of anything that's clear coated. Once it's dry, it's not coming off. Alrighty. There's definitely a trick to the symmetry part of the pinstriping. A lot of people don't know how I get it to match on each side. The way I do that is I do it one line at a time. So I always go from left to right, being right-handed. A lot of practice. Oh, my hand's actually shaking. A lot of people think that you got to have a steady hand, but it's really about your eye and where you're watching the line as it drags down the tank. As long as you keep your measurements right, the paint and the brush will follow where your hand goes. You always want to keep your hand steady and balanced. No matter which way you do that, I always have at least uh, some sort of balance on my hand so that I'm able to pull these lines. So the cool thing about striping is it's always freehand. I never know what it's going to look like at the end result. You have a huge play, a huge window of endless designs you can make. It's kind of like a road map. You can go in all different directions. A lot of people have a tendency to want to hold this brush like a pencil. The brush is made so that the 
paint just kind of drags down. So when I'm striping, I kind of keep it low, and I just drag the brush down like this. I'm not necessarily drawing it as much as I am keeping my hand level with the surface. I'm constantly adding more mineral spirits to the paint. Once you add a second color to any design, it usually gives it a real nice pop. A lot of people ask me if I make a mistake, what do I do? I try not to make mistakes, but if that's the case, it, this paint does come off with mineral spirits. I'm going to throw a second color on here, too. A lot of these brushes, when people try them out, they don't know that there's a trick. If they have a, I usually cut down the, the handle of the brush so that when I hold this brush, I'm able to twist it like this. Usually the brush, when they make MAC brushes, it comes out and hits your hand like this, so I notice that's the biggest thing that people do when they first start learning how to stripe. This paint comes right off with mineral spirits. You can clean up. You can wipe a line off if you've if you've made a mistake. All right, I'm going to add a process blue to this orange. You want to find a, when you do pinstriping, you really just have to commit to the line you're pulling. You can't really think about it kind of have to just trust it and go with it. I also have a tendency to follow my eye down the tank instead of looking at where my hand is. I'm finding any little spot on this tank that I can keep my hand balanced and steady. There we go. So every single piece of art that I do is always original, basically. That's the cool thing about it. I like pinstriping because it has to be super precise. I kind of fit the character of whatever bike or hot rod that I'm doing. But there's so many different styles of striping that I like to play around with. And I have a website, too, if you guys wanted to check it out and send me an email. If you ever want to learn how to pinstripe, I'd be more than happy to, to get you started and teach you how to do that.
You can see these squirrel hairs keep falling out of my brushes. I always have to make sure these brushes are pretty much ready to, to stripe, otherwise they eventually lose so much hair that they don't have as much quickness. Yeah, I did definitely uh, did that design a lot quicker than I thought. Does anyone have any questions? I guess I should uh, probably just keep showing you how to do more lines. to get a closer look at this. Yeah, sure. Now, the brushes you use, I, where do you buy that kind of stuff? This is Mac brushes. I typically like Mac brushes. You can go on macbrush.com and purchase them. Okay. Um, because this stuff isn't a really, I mean, you can't really just walk into places. I see pinstripe and stuff at Harbor Freight and that kind of stuff, but you don't really want to do that if you're. Local, local paint stores have all this material, the one-shot oh, okay. paint, the MAC brushes. You can get it at any sort of automotive paint store. Oh, okay. So they, it is out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Very nice. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Usually hot rods, motorcycles, if you want to pinstripe anything. It's a real precision-based art form. It's nice. It's nice to be able to do it. Now, style of pinstriping. What style is is there? A, do they do you call this a style? Is this is it classic and retro? I mean, how do you classify pinstripe? If somebody wants to ask to get something pinstriped, how do they? What is is there a vernacular they should use if for style? Sort of like traditional pinstriping, scroll striping. Um, a lot of it is just different lines and shapes, okay. you know? So it's a matter of how the artist's style is. You're going to develop your own style. Each person's going to be different. So when you want something pinstriped, just because somebody says they're a pinstriper, you really want to check out their work because I know you pinstripe my bike, and my bike is an old, it's old school, so I just wanted some very traditional pinstriping on it. So you need to be specific, and they might not do that style. Right. You're working on a new style now down in your booth. Yeah. Yep. Which, what is that? How are you describing that? I'm trying to mess with different patterns and stuff. Um, more like geometric shapes. I like, I like clean lines. That's like my biggest thing. There's a lot of stripers that eventually your hand, you know, it's all about hand control. So if you want to keep a consistent line, if it's a quarter of an inch all the way, you want it to be a quarter of an inch all the way. That's the biggest thing with stripers. So some of some people have to develop that hand control and be able to get every single line to be nice and clean so in the end result it's all uniform okay so it's good to check out their work absolutely yeah so and most people have a portfolio and if they don't you probably don't want them pinstriping anything that you're true, <laughs> true. <laughs> so all right so you're messing it, around with some geometric designs now right yeah yep yeah we have all our stuff uh my father does a lot of custom paint and i do the striping and our booth is at 2022 so come check us out okay we all have right. all this cool stuff displayed you have more you're doing to this tank i could keep adding i mean I as far as colors it really never ends i mean when i'm usually i know i'm done when i'm when i look at it i'm satisfied right. with, with what's there so in terms this was really quick i'm always amazed at how quick it is when you do it. i feel like it's a slow art form like does it, this feel slower i mean i what she just did there <laughs> oh yeah da, 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 da. mason or is funny uh, dave perowitz 
Uh, I don't know if any of you remember Dave. He's an old-time bike builder, and he is the kind of the godfather of flamed paint jobs. And he used to do this presentation. She said the same thing when I was interviewing her earlier uh, down in her booth. She said, well, you know, anybody can kind of do it. And Dave would do it, and he'd say the same thing about flames. So um, practice, but this is really hard, and that's really fast. And how long have you been doing this? It will be four years this year. Four years. Yeah. And so and you've gotten better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotten better. You didn't oh, start yeah. perfect. No. If you would have seen what I did in the beginning, it was all, I thought it looked like pinstriping, so I was super stoked about it, but thick and thin and yeah. nothing matched or anything like that. All right. And it's, I mean, you, you got to be able to deal with, when you're at shows, striping and all these people are watching you. It's such a like precision-based art form that you got to really concentrate and focus. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of clean living. You got to eat right. You can't. Yeah. A lot of clean living. So. And, yeah, you can't shake. You can't shake. I know. You can. So, well, it's, uh, they got medication for that. If you start shaking, if you Do drink. They? Yeah, you can take a pill. Yeah. And kind of <laughs> There's a pill for everything, Hellcat. There's a pill for everything. So does anybody have any questions? Oh, we got a question. Yeah, yeah I have a question. Um, you, you alluded to Dave, and he taped up a flame job, so I went home thinking all excited, wow, you know, I know how to do this now. And I was smart enough not to do it on my motorcycle, but I tried to paint my mailbox, which turned into a uh, more like a candy cane on LSD or something. <laughs> uh, but... It, it, it didn't come out well. So what, I, what I'd like to know is, like, how do you go about practicing? I mean, do you just get, like, your shop refrigerator and paint it and just that's what it is? Or can you wipe it off and try again? Or You can stripe anything. If it's going to sit still long enough, that's the way I did it. I pretty much pinstriped anything I could. Is, is All there over any my... going back? Like, <laughs> say what? Is there any going back? Is there any erasing? Like That's what it's about. you got to practice. Otherwise, you won't get good, you know? So um, how long before this sets up can, I mean, will the mineral spirits take it off? The mineral spirits will, will take it right off, yeah. But even after it dries and everything, you don't like it, you can go back and try again? Mm. Not really, huh? Yeah, otherwise you're getting into the clear coat, you got to sand it, uh, take it off. Do you have like about an hour? About an hour? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't do that in an hour. I couldn't do that in a lifetime. Just looking at it, that looks incredibly difficult. But um, anybody got any more questions? Technique, paint, anything? All right. Well, you're awesome. <laughs> you're amazing. I, she did my bike in Sturgis two years ago. I just watched it, and that bike. After you pinstripe my bike, it got run over oh, by yeah. a truck. This is a good story. And uh, in the parking lot, we watched it get run over by a truck, and then I got it fixed. The bike wasn't even finished when I rode it in Sturgis. And then I got run off the road uh, going to Joplin, Missouri after Sturgis, riding home. And uh, I got run off the road, and it endowed four or five times. And the whole bike kind of came apart. But the only thing that's still not damaged on that bike <laughs> is the pinstriping. So you did a great Yay. job. It's very durable. She did Yay. very durable pinstriping. And I, I've looked at wanting to repaint the bike, and I'm like, but you told me not to repaint it. When you pinstriped it, you said, no, you can't ever paint the bike. No, why would you do that? I know. So At least hang the tank. I would hang the tank. She said, you can't. So I'm going to have to get another it tank. It comes so. artwork. But anyway, what's your booth number? 2022. 2022. If you just walk straight back towards the back, you're going to run into her. She's got a great display, lots of stuff. The tank's down there for sale. Mm -hmm. Got lots of tanks. Do you have helmets down there? Helmets, too? tanks, art panels. Art panels. So there's stickers. a lot of stuff. So if you're still searching for that uh, Christmas gift for the guy you haven't seen yet, go down there and hit it up. Very reasonably priced, beautiful art. Thank you so much, Hellcat. Big round of applause, Thank Jillian. Thank you for being here. You're back again. What time do we have you again? 5.30. At 5.30? So if you didn't learn enough this time, come back and she'll... I'm going to do a completely different design. Completely different design. So come back at 5.30. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Hey, guys, a Progressive School of Rock